God is a God of a new beginning. God is a God of a second chance. God is a God who revives what is dead in the name of Jesus Christ. The best years of your life are ahead of you and God is a God of restoration. 2021 is gonna be an amazing year of restoration and recovery and blessing. God is gonna give you double for your trouble. It's gonna be a season of revival, a season of favor, a season of recovery, a season of restoration. 2021 will be a year of divine restoration in the name of Jesus.
How God is greater than COVID. How God is greater than depression. How God is greater than anger. How God is greater than your pain. How God is greater than your past. But God says a new sound is required if you want to see a new day. Come on, somebody. Just jump on your feet. Give a little bit of a praise dance. Do whatever you can in front of your television set. It's time for those shackles of depression to come off. Those shackles of despair to come off. Those shackles of of loneliness to come up and to say a new sound for a new day. Come on, somebody shout a new day. Well, a very good morning to you, CRC family, right there where you are. It's great to be with you, 2021, year of restoration. Are you ready to praise Jesus? Here we go. Darkness run for cover But the miracle that I just can't get over My name is registered in heaven yeah. I believe in signs and wonders I have resurrection power Yes I do Still the miracle that I just can't get over Heaven, oh, my praise belongs to you forever. This is my testimony from there to life. Cause grace rewrote my story. I testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Together, sons and daughters, born with blood and washed in water. Sing the praises of the Spirit, Son and Father. Our God will finish what He started. Yes, our God will finish what He started. This is my testimony from the Grace we wrote my story, I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous, I'll testify. This is my testimony, this is my testimony. Oh, come people, let us declare it this morning. If you believe he is good, hallelujah. If I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe. If I'm not dead, you're not done. No. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe. If I'm not dead, you're not done. No. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I From there to life, whose grace we wrote my story. I'll testify for Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. Oh, I'm alive. This is my testimony. From there to life, whose grace we wrote my story. I'll testify. By Jesus Christ the righteous, I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony.
to meet you at your point of need. If you need prayer for anything, the pastors, leaders are waiting online to pray with you. God is able to meet you at that point of need. We're going to continue to worship. Connect with us in Jesus' name. I've touched the world But it couldn't feel me Man's empty praise and treasures that fade are never enough. Then you came along and put me back together. And every desire is now satisfied here in your love. What does we all say? Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. I know it's true. 
Come on, get on your feet in front of your television and sing it. God is a God of a turnaround. God is a God of a breakthrough. Come on, at the start of this year, a divine year of restoration, no matter what you are facing, we know that God is able. Come on, sing it with all your heart today. Every other name, his name is enthroned above COVID. Come on, jump up in your lounge, in your living room, wherever you are this morning, and give the Lord the greatest praise in the name of Jesus Christ. The 10th of January 2021, a year of divine restoration. And let me say this to you this morning, my dear friends. I know many of you are facing great battles and challenges, but I want to tell you it's not how we start this year, it's how we end this year. And this is going to be a great and a glorious year for each and every one of you in Jesus' name. We're going to talk about that this morning. So we want to welcome you. Thank you for being with us on, on CRC, all our platforms, on TBN, TBN yet to all over Africa, One Gospel, Facebook Live, YouTube Live, CRC online radio stations, correctional facilities, all over the nations of the world that are fighting this pandemic. We are not alone. God is for us and we have the victory in the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome in Australia, welcome in Russia, welcome in Israel, welcome in America, Europe, India, China, and all over Africa. Come on there from Malawi, from Kenya, from Nigeria, from Khabarone, from wherever you are, let everything that have breath praise the name of the Lord. Come on, we require a new song for a new day in Jesus' name. God bless you. Come on, give somebody love. A blue to, to, to high five for all of you. Um, miss you all. And I just want to tell you, the auditorium may be empty, but I see each and every one of you here this morning in our churches all over South Africa. We are meeting with our president this afternoon, 3 o'clock, and uh, then I will go on Facebook Live and tell you the way forward. But I do not believe we are going to have a year like last year. I don't care how bad things are. I know that God is still in control. We may live in uncertain times, but there's nothing uncertain about the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Word of God, and the promises of God. Come on, before we get into the Word, stay on your feet this morning and give the Lord one big praise offering in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Also, since the last time I was on this platform, I am a, a third-time grandfather. Uh, my daughter this week had a beautiful 3.81 kilogram baby boy. She struggled with COVID as well. So the baby came early, but mother's well, baby is well, everybody is well. God is good, and God is still on the throne in Jesus' name. Amen. God is good. There's my baby with a second baby. How that baby ever fit in her belly, I don't know. Amen. But you know, I tell people all the time, look for the fingerprints of God in everything. In every negative, there's a positive. In every tragedy, there is a testimony. And I realize that many people have been affected adversely by this COVID. Many of you lost your loved ones. Many of you have suffered greatly. But I want to tell you that this is a chapter, maybe not a great chapter for many of us. We all have been affected. But I know that God is a God of a turnaround. And I know that the promises of God are yea and amen. I know some of you are sitting looking at me with loss. You lost your dad. You lost a mother. You lost a friend. These things are real. But family, we are not going into 2021 enthroning in COVID. We are going into 2021 to enthrone Jesus Christ as Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Come on, give the Lord one more praise wherever you are in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And can I remind you that God is still a way maker. He still is a miracle worker. He still is a great deliverer. And God will still have the final say. So my message this morning for 2021, I'm going over to the other side. Hallelujah. I'm going over to the other side. We read together Mark chapter 4, verse 35 to 40. The Bible says, on the same day, when evening had come, Jesus said to them, let us cross over to the other side. 
Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was, and other little boats were with him also. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves, first wave, second wave, third wave, beat into the boat so that it was already filling. But he was asleep in the stern on a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And they said to one another, and he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? I want you this morning as we start just to lift your hand quickly and to say, come on, somebody on the balcony, somebody over there, somebody at home this morning, say, I'm going over to the other side. Say it in Jesus' name. Maybe you're watching me this morning, sitting in front of your television screen, and it feels like your boat is sinking. Maybe waves have been beating into your boat. I know when the first wave of COVID came, it caused a lot of havoc in many people's lives. Now there's the second wave. And maybe your boat is filling. Maybe this 2021 is not starting the way you thought it should start. Well, it never started the way I expected, but that's okay. Because I don't know, I don't care how many waves beat into our boats. I know that Jesus is with us and we are safe and we are going to have peace and we are going over to the other side in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So the disciples... In the midst of the storm begins to panic and they are gripped by fear and they lose sight of three things number one the promise number two the person of jesus the presence of jesus and number three they lost sight of the power of jesus i know sometimes things get real things get tough and sometimes things get worse before it gets better I mean, many of us thought that after this first wave, things are going to get better. And now we're talking to the president this afternoon, and we listen to scientists, and we see what's happening all over the world, and we see that many people are saying things will never be the same again. But I want to say you, I say to you this morning, family, the same word that carried us through the first wave will carry us through the second wave, and if there's a third wave, will carry us through the third wave because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God is still able to deliver you. God is still able to save you. God is still able to provide for you in the name of Jesus. Oh, come on, shout amen, and give the Lord a praise offering. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So the disciples think about this. Number one, they lose focus of the promise of God. So Jesus simply says, let us cross over to the other side. And then he goes to sleep. He never tells them about the storm heading their way, which he knew was going to happen. You know, when this pandemic hit the world, many people said, where are the prophets of God? Why did they not warn the world? Well, God doesn't have to tell us everything. God expects us to go through these trials and these storms and through these tribulations because He promised that He's with us. He gave us a promise that 2021 will be a year of divine restoration, that you are going to recover all. So He never tells the disciples about the storm heading their way, the opposition heading their way, opposition to their mission. He goes asleep. Sometimes people think, but God, where are you? In our world, it feels like you're asleep. Things are getting worse. But it's going to get better. Weeping endures for a moment, but joy comes in the morning. After every winter, there is a summer. Hallelujah. After every night, there is a day. Hallelujah. Sometimes things are bitter and and, and things may be difficult to go through in the name of Jesus Christ and difficult to contend with. But we know that God is for us and God is with us and God will not leave us and God will not forsake us in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So the disciples lose sight of the promise of God and Jesus is asleep in the situation. Maybe you feel like in your business, God is asleep. Maybe you feel in your ministry, God is asleep. But God is in control even when things seem to be out of control. And I want to say it again. He never talks to them about the storm heading their way. Why? 
Because he expected them to navigate through the storm. He expected them to use their faith. He expected them to trust the promise that God said, let us go over to the other side. It doesn't matter what lies between the A and the Z. It doesn't matter what lies between when you meet Jesus and your destiny. God has given you the power. God has given you His Word. God has given you the Holy Ghost. God has promised, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will be with you to the end of time. So God expected them to navigate through the storm until they woke Him up with His words, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? I mean, sometimes storms become so real that we see ourselves perishing, although we are still breathing. And I want to tell you this morning, the fact that you are still alive means that you have places to go and you have things to do. I'm here to tell you that 2021 is going to be a year of great recovery and it's going to be a year of restoration for you and for your family. Yes, you had losses. Yes, you had suffered. Yes, you may not know what the future holds, but I want to tell you that you still have a promise that 2021 will be a year of divine restoration. Oh, come on, shout amen and give the Lord a praise wherever you are in Jesus' name. So Jesus deals with a storm and then he says to the disciples, I want to read in the Passion Translation, he says, why are you so afraid? I mean, people are, are, are afraid. <laughs> the level of fear is worse than the first wave. And you know, if you've ever been through a storm on a boat, you know there's not only one wave that hits you. It's wave upon wave upon wave. But you keep your eyes on the shore and you keep on putting your head against the wind and you keep on rowing or you keep on paddling so that you get on to the other side in Jesus name so he says why are you so afraid child of God haven't you learned to trust me yet family it's time to put our theory into practice time to put our faith in action this Christian journey faith is not a theory it's not a three-step plan. It's the way we live. It's the way we walk. We have to make up our mind to trust the promise of God and keep on keeping on. Whether there's a, another wave. No matter what the president says this week. No matter what the scientists say. And, 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 and I do respect the scientists. I just want to say this. Uh, can we take a moment to give thanks and honor to all our doctors, the thousands of doctors all over South Africa, all over Africa, all over our world that put their lives at risk. I saw this week with the delivery of my grandson, how the doctors work, the nurses work, uh, the medical staff work. Come on, let's give oh God praise for all the frontline workers that are putting their lives at risk every day. We honor you, we salute you, and we pray God's divine favor and God's protection upon you. And we respect you. But I want to say this, that our doctors are not the ones making decisions. They are the ones following protocol. And I understand that we have to respect science. But last time I looked, the Bible says, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are sons of God. Not those who are led by science. And our world is so divided. People won't like me to say this and Facebook will squash me. But the scientists are so divided about this pandemic. And the Antichrist is obviously trying to exploit this pandemic, which is real, to destabilize our world and to remove godliness out of our society and world. I mean, how ridiculous in the House of Congress in America that the person who opened in prayer had to say amen and a woman. I mean, hello. Amen has nothing to do with gender. Amen is a Hebrew word which means so be it. We agree. Our solidarity. Like the world's going crazy. Don't you go crazy. The world is using this to incite fear, uncertainty. Read the headlines of the newspaper. It's all to control you with fear, fear, fear. But my Bible says God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. David says, I will not be afraid of evil tidings. My heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not fear. Shout it out this morning. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not fear in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So yes, this COVID storm is real. 
Therefore, we have to walk by faith. We have to declare Psalm 91 as we did with the first wave. For we walk by faith and not by sight. We have to voice our promises and not our concerns. We have to declare the Word of God over our lives. And not what the scientists say. Not what the rapport says. Amen. I know some of you are looking at me there and say, but pastor, be realistic. Hey, I've had many in my own family affected with this COVID virus. Many of my pastors have been affected by this COVID virus. Many of our members have been affected by the COVID virus. We have buried some people ourselves. Some people on this platform this morning have lost their dads, etc., etc. So don't tell me I don't understand. I understand that cancer is real. I understand that poverty is real. 25,000 children die every day because of poverty. I understand our world is in a crisis. I understand that this COVID virus is a crisis. I do understand it. But we are not going to go through this virus putting our trust in scientists. We are going to go through this virus putting our trust in God and glorifying God and magnifying the name of Jesus Christ above every other name. Oh, come on, Christian. It's time to be loud and proud about Jesus Christ. Time to lift up the name of Jesus because the Bible says God has exalted him and given him the name that is above every other name that at the mention of the name of Jesus every knee shall bow of things in the heaven things on the earth and things under the earth and every tongue shall confess Jesus is Lord the Bible says in Romans 10 13 whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved the Bible says in Acts chapter 4 verse 12 there is no other name under heaven whereby we must be saved this is a time for a God intervention this is a time for the church to pray like never. This is the time to cry out to the God of heaven. This is the time to lift our eyes to the hills from whence cometh our help. Our help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. Give the Lord a bit of a praise this morning if you believe it. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. We have to keep on saying, I dwell in the secret place of the Most High. I abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In Him will I trust. Jesus said to the disciples, why are you so fearful? Have you not learned to trust? That's the essence of faith. Trusting when you don't understand. Trusting in the Lord with all your heart and not relying on your own understanding. Acknowledging God. Yes, being wise, sanitizing, doing the possible, social distancing where it's necessary. Not just in church. We need our churches open. A church is safer than a taxi. Put my uh, preaching voice up, please. Church is safer than a gym. We need people back in the house of God. So I'll tell you what we're going to do next week. The Bible says, Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers and under His wings you shall take refuge. His truth, His word shall be your shield and your buckler. You shall not be afraid. Say it. I will not be afraid. Say it. I will not be afraid of the COVID virus by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand will fall at my side, 10,000 at my right hand, but it shall not come near me. Say amen this morning. And don't tell me, yeah, but I know somebody and this and this happened to those people. You're not that person. You have to choose to continue to walk by faith. Like Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8 in the message, he says, We've been surrounded and battered by troubles, but we're not demoralized. We're not sure what to do, but we know that God knows what to do. Go and take God out of the equation. We've been spiritually terrorized, but God has not left our sight. We've been thrown down, knocked down, lost our jobs, but we haven't been broken. 
Since we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written, I believe, therefore I spoke. I also believe, and therefore do I speak the promise of God. I'm going over to the other side. I'm going over to the other side. 2021, a year of recovery. 2021, a year of divine restoration. I'm going over to the other side. I'm going through the storm in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm going over to the other side. Because I have a promise. And the promises of God are yea and amen. No matter how many waves come, wave one, wave two, wave three, wave four, doesn't matter. Sometimes things get worse before they get better. We're not moved by the waves. We're moved by the promise. The disciples were moved by the waves and waves and what happened? Panic. Fear. We are perishing. Don't you care? Ask God that if He cares. I mean, God who sent His Son, God who gave His best, don't you care? Second thing they lost sight of, and this is amazing. There's the first thing is the promise. I want to say it again. The Bible says there remains a rest for the people of God. So Jesus gives a promise. He says, hey, we're going to the other side. And he sleeps while the waves are beating into the ship. He's asleep on a pillow, a waterbed. <laughs> Think about it, man. Jesus walked this earth as a man. And the disciples are overcome by fear. And they see their boat filling. And they speak their care and their concern. We are perishing. We're going down. We're never going to get through this. Nobody is safe. We have no future. We have no hope. Because they took their eyes off the promise. Saint Peter did when he walked on the water in the storm. And at the word of God, come. And he took his eyes off the promise and the person of Jesus Christ. What happened? He began to sink. Some of you have been sinking. You have to get your eyes back on the promise. And then the second thing is, they lost focus of the presence of Jesus, the person of Jesus. I mean, Jesus is in the boat. So they've, they've seen all these miracles. They, they, they've seen how many things he's done. And, and it happens. Sometimes things are so real that, that we go in panic mode. But he's there. And I want to say to you this morning, he's there. He's Jehovah Shammah. He's the Lord your shepherd who promised, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5 and 6, the Bible says, For he himself has said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. So that you may boldly say, The Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do against me? Matthew 28, he said, Lo, I'm with you to the end of time. Romans 28 or Romans 8, we know, he says, through all these things, we are more than conquerors. What can separate you from the love of God through Christ Jesus, our Lord? You're never beyond God's reach. God is with you. And sometimes when you feel at your loneliest, that's when God is carrying you. God is sustaining you. God gives you grace for every day. Maybe it's been one meal, but God has been there every day. God has been faithful. And I want you to take a moment to look back through 2020. It may not be the year that you wanted, but you can see the fingerprints of God. You can see the footsteps of God, how God has kept you, how God has carried you, how God has sustained you. Come on, at the start of 2021, jump out of your couch and give the Lord a praise this morning for His goodness and His mercy. Because the God Bible says there is no test, trial, tribulation that has overtaken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will with every test, trial, and tribulation make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it 2,000 years ago. God made a way. His name is Jesus Christ, and He still is faithful. He still is able. He still is a deliverer. He still is a mighty God. He still is a mountain mover, a storm calmer, a sustainer of His people. Oh, come on this morning. Give the Lord a bit of a praise where you are. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. I hear thousands in this place this morning. <laughs> well, all the angels are praising. 
And soon you're all going to be back in church. Soon. Soon. We don't put our hope in the vaccine. We thank God for vaccine, those of you that want to take it. But we don't put our trust in vaccine. We don't put our trust in anything other than God. I know you maybe feel overwhelmed at times. But we have to simply keep our eyes on Jesus. Hebrews 12 verse 2, the Bible says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Philippians 2 verse 9, the Bible says, God has highly exalted him and given him the name that is above every other name. You know, COVID means a throne. And I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but you have to be blind spiritually not to see what's happening in the world. I'm not saying our politicians are to blame, but you know the spirit of the Antichrist is very real and it will exploit any situation to advance his order. Now the Bible says when Jesus comes back, that which is deemed normal or abnormal will be deemed normal and that which is deemed normal will be abnormal. That means the things that are godly, people will look at as abnormal. And the things that people, the, is antichrist, people will see as normal. Don't think that this spirit is not going to target Christianity, and it's not going to target the Word of God, and it's not going to target the Church of Jesus Christ. Don't think social media platforms are not going to target preaching, and they're not going to target Christianity, and they're not going to try and dethrone the name of Jesus Christ. But I want to tell you, in the name of Jesus Christ, before Satan has his day, there's going to be a move of God in our world, that there's going to be an outpouring of the Holy Ghost, and the name of Jesus Christ will be glorified, and all the earth will be filled with a knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. There's no devil in hell that can stop what God has planned because Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against my church. Come on. I see dead bones come alive. I see an army rising across our planet. I see what Satan meant for evil. God is turning around for good. I see Christians becoming stronger and more determined and more powerful. I see Christians rising in a mission to alleviate poverty and suffering, to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ like never. And I declare there is nothing the devil can do about it because the devil is a defeated foe and he's under our feet. Give the Lord a praise if you believe it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, give him a praise. Hallelujah. Third thing the disciples lost. They lost focus of his power. They doubted God's ability to deliver them. Jeremiah 17, the Bible says, Cursed is the man who trusts in man. I'm going to say it again. I respect scientists, godly Scientists, I do believe there's an agenda. I do believe there's people that are trying to help our world and they're being influenced without them knowing it. And as a preacher after 34 years, I look at everything in the light of the gospel. Advancing God's kingdom and stopping the advancement of God's kingdom. Because nothing else matters. We're all going to die. <laughs> I said we're all going to die and I'm going to talk about it tonight people are afraid of death why do you fear death? why are you afraid to die? whilst you are afraid to die fear has power over you people that are not saved I understand it but Christians Christians that are so paranoid in panic mode? No. How is it that you are so fearful, Jesus said to those disciples, in the boat? The boat may be your business, your ministry, your marriage, your emotions. He said, and, and the waves were beating in, wave after wave, wave after wave. And they were obviously discouraged and despondent, as many people are starting this year. Discouraged, low, despondent. But I want to tell you this morning that you have a promise 
And I want to tell you this morning that God loves you. And I want to tell you this morning that God is for you. And if God is for you, who can be against you? I want to ask you this morning to have hope in the promise of God and in the person of Jesus Christ and in the power of God. I want to remind you that God is still able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think according to the power that works on the inside of you. I want to tell you that there is no problem God cannot solve, that God is alive. Jesus is alive, that Jesus rose from the grave and the grave is empty and He's your Lord and your Savior. You have to get your eyes back on Jesus and trust in His delivering power in the name of Jesus Christ. I mean, it doesn't matter what people say. I don't expect the world to have faith, but the church must have faith. I don't expect the world to be positive, but Christians... We need to be optimistic. We need to be positive. We need to be forward-minded. We have to look through the storm. We have to keep our eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. God is still omnipotent. No sickness He cannot heal. I mean, uh, it's like people are mocking. There's a, a mocking spirit out there. Where is their God? Where is their God? Our God is in the heavens. Our God is on the earth. Our God is at work. Our God is orchestrating our deliverance. Our God is going to pour out the Holy Ghost in a way that will astound people. Our God is not asleep. Your God is asleep. Our God is not asleep. Our God is orchestrating our deliverance. Our God is on the move. Our God is with us. Our God is for us. Our God is well able. Our God is exalted above every other name. Say amen in Jesus' name. So no matter what stands between you and the other side, God is able to get you there. No mountain He cannot move. No valley He cannot get you through. I want to close with Romans 8 verse 31. The Bible says, What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? If God is for us, it doesn't matter what this COVID does. As real as it is, He who did not spare His own Son, but delivered Him up for us all, how shall He not with Him also freely give us all things? We shall bring a charge against God's elect. It's God who justifies who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore also is risen. Who is even at the right hand of God in the place of victory. That's where you are this morning. And he makes intercession for us. He's not abandoned us. He's not forsaken us. He's not left our planet. God is not in panic mode. God is in control. I said, God is in control. God is in control of your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, distress, persecution. And, and, and there's going to come a, a, a time of severe persecution against the church. I'm not saying it negatively. I'm saying it factually. You're going to have to decide where you stand. If you fear prison, Why? If you fear slander because you stand for Jesus, why? Whose reputation is at stake? Sell famine, nakedness, peril, sword. And it is, as it is written, for your sake we were killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through Christ who loved us. Now he's talking about the early church. The church was birthed in tremendous persecution. People lost their lives. Imagine if the early church was gripped by fear. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. These people were stoned. These people were killed. These people were persecuted. These people were grabbed out of their houses. And they counted themselves worthy to suffer for the name of Jesus Christ. I'm not saying don't be safe. I'm not saying don't, well, I'm not going to say respect the virus. I'm not going to say don't understand how this virus operates. But be controlled by it? What's going to happen to God's kingdom if we all crawl in a corner and we're all afraid? We're afraid to die. 
And if the early church had that mindset, there'd be no church. And I'll talk about it tonight because if we don't have a revelation of eternity and a revelation of death, we will be controlled by the fear of death as long as we live. And, and we should understand that God is able to, to sustain us and protect us. Huh? Even if that virus attaches itself to you, God is able to sustain you. Thank you for the one amen. We're not going to sit down in 2021. We're not going to go crawl in holes and be controlled by fear while people are going to hell. Can I have an amen? I mean, when I go out, I want to go out in a blaze of glory. I don't want to go out sitting, sucking my thumb in a corner somewhere. I want to go out leading somebody to Jesus Christ. Making Jesus famous, not this COVID. He says, I'm persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of Christ or God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. You're never beyond God's reach. You're never outside of God's protection. I believe that God will keep us here until we have fulfilled our assignment. I do believe that. I'm not saying there's not a pandemic. I'm not saying there's not a wave. The waves that beat into the discipleship were very real. And Jesus said, why are you controlled by that? Why are you afraid of that? Why are you, you uncertain? Why do you believe you're going to perish? When are you going to learn to trust that I'm able, that I'm your God, that I'm faithful, that I'm for you, that I'm willing, that I'm your friend, that I'm not against you. You know, at the start of this year, I want to say to all of you that God loves you. And I've been at the deathbed of so many people, Christians and unsaved people. I've been in hospital rooms where people die, and it's been a glorious experience where people just graduate, step over into eternity. I believe we need to fight for life, but we should not fear death. It's a big difference. Because fear gets, gives Satan a foothold. It's the spirit that opens the door to everything else. So the Bible says God's not given you this spirit of fear. But this spirit of power, love, and a sound mind, that's the Holy Ghost. So you're watching me this morning. I met somebody in the gym the other day. Because some of us still gym. And uh, we have to after Christmas. <laughs> But in any case, and he said to me, Pastor, this year I want to get my life right with God. I said, well, get it right with God. Don't let anything stop you. Maybe the church is not open, but God is right there where you are. And this morning you can get your life right with God wherever you are. I want every head bowed, every eye closed, no one moving. In your lounge, your living room, wherever you are, your hospital bed, watching me, right where you are this morning, God's presence is there. And the greatest thing you can do at the start of this year is to surrender your life to Jesus. Why don't you do that now? Why don't you give it all to Him? Why don't you put your life in His hands this morning at the start of 2021? There's no better way to start this year. I just cannot imagine how people must be going through this time without Jesus. And the disciples had Jesus. They lost focus for a moment. But they quickly got that focus back. Get your focus back. Get your focus back on the promise of God. Get your focus back on the person of Jesus Christ. Get your focus back on the power of God. Give your life to Jesus this morning and receive the grace of God. Every head bowed, every eye closed, right where you are this morning, you say, Pastor, that's me. I need a fresh start with God, a new beginning. I want you to put your hand on your heart right where you are unashamedly and say this right now. Say, Lord Jesus Christ, today I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you that you died for my sin. I believe with all my heart you rose from the grave, and that you are alive. Today, I surrender my life to you, and I thank you for your forgiveness. 
and for salvation. I'm born again. I'm your child, freely forgiven in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you believe it, give the Lord a praise. Come on, all over our platforms, give the Lord a praise. And please, if you made this decision, we want you to write us on that address, on the platform, wherever you are. We want to get a Bible to you and we want to help you through 2021 to be a great child of God in Jesus' name. You know, we may be locked down right now, but we can never live in isolation. We need one another. The church should open sooner than later. We pray God for favor. We pray God for wisdom. We pray that this wave will subside in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. We love you all. Have a fantastic day. Amen and amen and amen. Come on, everybody. Give the Lord a praise wherever you are. Come on. To stand on your feet for another 10 seconds. Give God a bit of a praise. Say God is good and His mercy endures forever. I'm going over to the other side. 2021, year of restoration. God bless you. God say, bye donkey. Thank you.